it's story time again, and today we're going to read a story about God having a purpose for each and every one of us. I hope you enjoy it, so let's get ready. Our book today is The Oak Inside the Acorn, written by Max Licato and illustrated by George Angelini. The acorn looked at the world around him. Green hills rolled their backs in the distance. Bright daisies bloomed below him. Above him, a family of puffy white clouds floated through the blue sky. The world looks so big, the acorn said to his mother. I'm glad to be right here with you. His mother was a tall, beautiful oak tree. I'm glad too, my little acorn. It's good for you to be here with me now. But when your time comes to go into the world, you'll be fine. I'll be afraid. Mother Oak hugged little acorn in her strong branches. Within you is a great oak, little acorn. Just be the tree God made you to be. The thought of letting go and leaving the safety of his mother's branches was scary to little acorn. So he tried not to think about it, but deep down inside, he knew the time was coming. One by one, his brothers and sisters had been letting go and saying goodbye. They had been afraid too, but their mother had assured them with the same words, within you is a great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. Each time he heard this, little acorn would look at himself and say, an oak in me? He was so small. It was hard for him to believe that he could ever be a tree. The time to let go came sooner than the little acorn wanted it. It started with a bump. He was resting one summer afternoon, thankful for the coolness and the shadow of the leaves when, thud, the tree shook. His mother's branches trembled and little acorn went to, to swing back and forth. A farmer's pickup had accidentally backed into the tree trunk. Little, little acorn had swung before, stirred by the wind, bumped by climbing kids, and each time he'd always held on but not this time. He tried. He pressed his thin stem into the branch as hard as he could. It didn't work. He was a heavier acorn than he used to be, and his stem began to pull away from the branch. Uh-oh, Mom! It's okay, little acorn, Mother Oak assured him. You can't hang on forever. It's time. You've got to let go. Down he fell, flipping over and over, slowly slipping through the leaves until he bounced onto something hard. He had landed in the back of the pickup truck. The truck vibrated and began to drive away. It's okay, little acorn, his mom called out. Within you is a great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. Little, little acorn barely heard the last few words. The truck was already moving down the road, going somewhere. He just didn't know where. As the truck bounced, so did the acorn. Ouch, he said, this is rough. It gets better, he heard a voice say. Rolling over, little acorn looked up at a young tree. Who are you, he asked. I'm a new little orange tree on my way to be planted. What do orange trees do, asked the acorn. By now the road and the ride were smoother. We grow oranges. Oh, answered the acorn. He didn't know what an orange was, and it was just about to ask when the truck slowed to a stop. Wow, exclaimed orange tree, who was tall enough to see out of the truck. What is it? asked the acorn. Trees, orange trees everywhere. It's an orange grove. Okay, little orange tree, it's time for you to be planted, the farmer said as he lowered the trunk tailgate and climbed into the back of the truck. The acorn rolled away just in time to avoid the farmer's big boot. The farmer took the tree and was gone for a long time. Little acorn stared at the sky as it began to darken. He missed his mother oak her strong branches. This would be the first night away from her. The tailgate banged and the farmer jumped in. A quick sweep, he said, and I'm headed home. Little acorn had never seen a broom. He barely saw this one before it sent him high in the air. He landed in some soft dirt. I wonder what happened to you. It was Orange Tree. Little acorn was happy to hear a familiar voice. Is this your new home? It sure is, Orange Tree said, and looks like it's your new home, too. Little Acorn had one more question. Orange Tree, what do I do next? Orange Tree's voice was sleepy. Just settle in, little friend, and rest. God will make you grow. 
And so little Acorn did just that. He rested that night, the next day, that week, next month. There in the soft soil, surrounded by orange trees, he sank deeper and deeper into the ground and slumbered. He slept a long, long time. When little Acorn awoke, he didn't know where he was. He stretched upward, and when he did, he kept stretching higher and higher until he popped out of the dark dirt into the sunlight. Well, look who's awake, announced Orange Tree. Little Acorn looked around and then up. Hello, Orange Tree. Have I been sleeping long? Long enough to become a small tree. Little Acorn looked down at himself and said, I've changed. His round shell was now a slender trunk. You are growing up, Orange Tree said. Now you are a little oak. Little Oak straightened himself and remembered his mother's words. Within you is a great oak. Maybe she was right, he thought, and he stood a bit taller. But even at his tallest, he was much smaller than the big orange trees. Their bushy branches grew greener and greener. Then one day, Orange Tree called out to his friend, Little Oak, look, my first orange. The big orange tree spoke. He'll have many more, they said. So will I, announced Little Oak. The trees in the grove laughed. They didn't mean to hurt Little Oak's feelings, but they did. You'll never have oranges, they said, chuckling. Little Oak straightened his branches and pushed as hard as he could, but no oranges popped out. Not that day, nor the next, nor the next. When the farmer came to collect the fruit, Little Oak was worried. He had none to give. Well, hello, Little Oak, the farmer greeted. How did you get here? The farmer walked away, and when he returned, he carried a big shovel. I know just the place for you. He lifted the little oak out of the ground. Bye-bye, my friend, said the orange tree. The farmer didn't take little oak too far away. He carried him out of the grove to his big white house. The farmer chose a spot in the backyard overlooking the orange grove. Let's see how you do it here, he said. Then he dug a deep hole and set little oak inside it. He placed dirt around little oak and pressed it tightly around the tree's roots. Little oak liked his new home. For the first time, he stood taller than almost everything around him. Little oak was striking his roots into the dirt when he heard, Hi, I'm Pink Petunia. Who are you? Little oak looked at the bright flower near the house. He started to answer, but Pink Petunia didn't give him time. Rosie is next to the house. Hi there, Chirp Rosie. Daisy's here too. That's me, said a white and yellow flyer. Hello, little tree. The pink petunia continued. We are soft and smell sweet. What about you? Little Oak didn't know how to answer. He knew he had no oranges. Do you grow flowers, pink petunia asked. Little Oak never remembered seeing flowers like roses or petunias on his mother, but still, maybe oaks did grow flowers. Maybe I could. Maybe that is what I'm made to do, he answered. So he tried as hard as he could. Little Oak tried to grow flowers like his friends could grow. And as the sun grew hotter, they unfolded into a rainbow of pinks, reds, and yellows. Little Oak, however, just grew taller. And as the days grew longer, his roots grew deeper. Every day he tried to grow colorful flowers, but he never could. Pink Petunia could, so could Rosie, so could Daisy, but not Little Oak. Finally, Little Oak decided to rest. His branches were tired and drooping. His leaves were drooping. Even the flowers were sleepy. We're going to rest now, Little Oak, the flowers told him, and they did. The sky grayed and days shortened and the whole garden slept. While Little Oak slept, he dreamed. He dreamed of his days as a little acorn on his mother's branch. Deep in his sleep, he heard her soft voice. Within you is a great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. When the sun warmed his branches, Little Oak awoke, only he wasn't so little anymore. He could see farther. He had grown taller and wider. The winds didn't bend him as much. His branches were as big as his trunk used to be. Little Oak was becoming a big oak. Many years passed, and each year he grew bigger and wider, wider and bigger, till everything in the farmer's yard looked up to him. See the tree growing bigger and bigger? each year. Now Orange Tree and the flowers called him Big Oak. He spread his big branches and looked around. Orange Tree was taller too, but not as tall as Big Oak. Big Oak was taller than all of his friends. 
They were wide, but not as wide as Big Oak. He was the tallest. He was the widest. But he still wondered what he was supposed to do. He couldn't grow oranges or flowers. He just grew bigger, and he didn't know why. Big Oak was just awakening from a long winter's nap, his leaves tiny buds, when a young farmer brought two ropes and tied them to one of his strong branches. Close by, a little girl watched. Rosie Rose was puzzled. What's it for, Big Oak? I don't know, Big Oak answered, but he soon found out. Can I do it, Daddy? Can I swing? Go ahead, urged the man, and the little girl with bright blue eyes and the hair of the color of Daisy's flowers sat in the swing. Big Oak felt the tug, but barely. He was strong, and Little Girl was small. With her daddy's help, she swung forward, not too far, but farther the next day and farther the next. By the time the sun was hot and the flowers were plenty, she could swing alone, kicking her feet higher and higher until she could see the roof of her house. Then back she would swing, back until she seemed to look straight at the ground. Big Oak loved the sound of Little Girl's laughter, her footsteps running toward him, her squeals of delight as she swung higher and higher into the sky. Yes, Big Oak loved Little Girl. When she swung, he stood strong. When her daddy built her a tree house in Big Oak's branches, Big Oak gladly held it. When Little Girl stretched out on the grass to watch the clouds float, Big Oak shaded her. She played in his branches, cl climbed his trunk, rested in his shadow, and together they grew. Each year, both taller. Each year, both stronger. When gray skies brought cold days, Big Oak slept and the swing hung silent and the playhouse stayed empty. When blue skies brought warm days, they laughed and played. Little girl talked and he listened. And at last, Big Oak knew he had become the tree God made him to be. One day, Little Girl came to Big Oak with a little boy, though neither was too little. They sat on his branches and talked. Big Oak held them both. And when they carved their name on his trunk, he didn't mind. Little boy pushed the swing, little girl laughed, and Big Oak protected them from the sudden rain. In time, little girl didn't swing so much. When she climbed into the treehouse, she sat more and played less. Little girl was becoming Big Girl. Big Girl now stood as tall as Big Oak's lowest branch. One day, Rosie Rose said to Big Oak, She's growing up, Big Oak. She'll soon leave. Big Oak didn't answer, but he understood. Big Oak spent many blue sky days sitting on the ground, leaning back against Big Oak's trunk and watching the clouds drift by. Big Oak knew Big Girl had a big question on her mind because she said things like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be, and it's hard to let go, and how can I know who I am? Big Oak wanted to talk to Big Girl. He knew just what to say. He would say, within you is a great girl. Just be the person God made you to be. Orange trees grow oranges, he would say. Flower plants grow flowers and oaks. Oaks grow tall enough for swings and strong enough for swinging and big enough to hold little girls until they become big girls. He wanted to, but he couldn't say the words. One day, big girl was so sad. The little girl who used to giggle in big oaks shade just sat, silent tears flowing down her cheeks. It's hard to let go, she said. Big oak was listening and he had an idea. He looked down his branch at a little acorn. I have a special job for you, Big Oak said. The next time the wind blew his branches, Big Oak let this branch shake more than the others. The little acorn popped loose and landed in Big Girl's lap. Big Girl picked it up and started to toss it away, but stopped. She held the little acorn in her hand and stared at it. She turned up and looked up at Big Oak. Were you ever this small? Answering her own question, she continued, of course you were. You grew into a great oak from a little acorn. All you did was become what God made you to be. She looked again at the acorn and then back at the tree. Her eyes brightened. Do you suppose that's what God wants me to do? Big Oak wanted to shout. Yes, but he didn't have to. Big Girl stood and announced, of course he does. Now it's time for me to let go and become the person God made me to be. Big Girl smiled, placed the acorn in her pocket, and began to walk away. But after a few steps, she stopped and turned. She looked at the swing, the treehouse. She looked at Big Oak. She walked over to him and placed her hand on his trunk. Without a word, she said goodbye. Without a word, Big Oak said the same. 
Little acorn was afraid, so what does mama tell him? Just be the tree God made you to be. And so it was hard for him to, to believe he could ever be a big oak tree. He thought maybe he could grow oranges or maybe he could grow flowers, but he didn't. He grew bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. And then as time passed, he grew into a big oak tree. And then one day he found that his strong branches were just right for a very special purpose. Do you remember what that purpose was? Sure you do. It was to hold a swing for the little girl, to have a tree house built in his branches, to provide shade. But the little girl grew bigger, just like the oak tree grew bigger. And so the oak tree became the best tree he could be. And he did what God made him to be. And then the girl became the big girl. And she found out and realized that God wanted her to be the best she could be, and to be the person that God made her to be. And that's what God wants for us, for each and every one of us, because God made of us for a very special purpose. We not, may not know what that purpose is yet, but he does have a special purpose for you. He has a special purpose for me. And that's what we're to do, to be the best we can be for God, because we love him. Well, that's the end of our story for this week. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll join me next week when we have another one. But until we do, 